Hey everybody, welcome back. And so we're continuing on with our information security certificate. And now we're going to do hash and compare passwords asynchronously. So as a reminder, um, oh, and if you haven't, um, uh, yeah, as a reminder to start this project, the last video is where we d built and deployed this project to render, which makes it so that we have a deployed uh, web application, which we can use to test our free code camp results. Uh, as, a hashing, uh, as hashing is designed to be computationally intensive, it is recommended to do so asynchronously. So because hashing is compulent, because it takes a long time to compute hashes, it's recommended to do it asynchronously, meaning that the program isn't held up while you're waiting for your hashes to get complete. Uh, to this blocks incoming connections while you hash. So that means that your server would be working on hashing when it would be blocking incoming communications. So all you have to do to hash a p password asynchronously is call bcrypt.hash, plain password, salt rounds, an error message, and a hash. Oh, and then, so this is a callback function with an error message and a hash. And then you store your hash in your database using the code block within the asynchronism. Uh, add this hashing function to your server. Okay, cool. So we're going to keep this guy over here. And we've got our existing project over here. Hmm, how'd that happen? Pop this up. Uh, we've already defined the variables used in your function for you. So where have they defined the variables? Oh, I think what they mean is that they've defined like bcrypt and salt rounds. Oh, salt rounds and my, my password. Okay. Because my password plain text would be this one, uh, the hash, some other plain password. I don't see the hash. I'm um, in that. Okay. We've already defined variables used in the function for you to use and log it to the console for you to see. At this point, you would normally save the hash to your database. Now, when you need to figure out if the new input is the same data as the hash, you would just use the compare function. Well, I think that they're just saying this right here. P paste this in. Um, start a, do not remove notes place between the thing. So we want to go bcrypt dot hash. And then in here we want to go, is it really just the same exact thing? My plain text password. My plain text password is a variable which is passed in from here. And then we've got salt rounds, which is a variable that we've got here. So salt rounds, uh, error hash, and then we're passing in finally a callback function for error hash, and we fill it in with the block, and it says, what does it say? At this point, you would normally save it to your Now when you need to figure out if a new input is the same hash, you would do this, bcrypt.compare. Okay, so sol.log, what are we gonna log? the hash right because that's going to be this the f result from the function so I wonder if we went npm start would we yeah we're getting a hash right here uh, just to make it even more clear I could just be like um, this is the hash so we start that and stop the server start it again and now we've got, this is the bcrypt hash. So this is showing us that it's working. Um, now when you need to figure out the new inputs in the same data as the hash, you would just use the compare function. So the compare function. Mm. Add this to your existing hash function since you need to wait for the hash to complete before calling the compare function. After you log the hash and log res to the console. Oh, that's just saying log res to the console. Huh. You should see the console in the hash, and this true is printed. If you change my plain password in the compare function to some other plain text password, you should say false. Okay, so what are we doing here? We, we want to go bcrypt uh, dot compare and my plain text password hash um, error and response. Yeah, okay, but hash, what is, what are we doing with the hash? Hash, I think we need to make that a, a variable name. Um, let's just console.log, the response, and I'm just going to add in here the response. 
So now if we stop it and start it, looks like hash is not defined. Okay, so add the hashing variable. At this point, you would normally save the hash to your database um, and log it to your console for you to see. Now when you need to figure out if the new input is the same as the hash, you need to do that. Um, do we have hash in here at all? It's just right there. Okay, so we should do um, const hash is equal to an empty string. And so if we go um, hash plus equals the hash, um, application hash, and then we say application hash. Um, let's see if that works. So I'm going to try to start the server again. It says it's false. But that makes sense because we've added this here. So if I were to take this away entirely, because we were adding this um, um, right here, this string to that, and that's going to cause the compare to not work. And so, yeah, I think now if we were to restart it, it's going to say false again. Application hash, application. Assignment to a constant variable. Well, let's see what happens if we just go const hash is equal to hash. So if we save that, run it again, Identifier for hash has already been declared. In the instructions, they just say console.log hash. I wonder if we just did that. Oh. Application hash is not defined. So instead of doing that, we're just going to put that as hash. Hash is not defined. So return hash. And then we set a const of hash. OK, so now we're making the hash become the return of that. So we'll see what happens here. Okay, so now it's undefined and it's logging now. Oh no, but it's running. So, what happens if we get rid of that as well? Undefined. Okay, so add this into your existing hash function. Oh, got it. Okay. So we want to add this to here. Reading the instructions is very helpful. So now if we were to save that, um, co command C to stop the server and npm start. Okay, so now we're getting true. So now, and then they're saying that if you pass, if you change the plain text password, it should be false. Um, hmm. My plain text password. Hmm. Okay, so add this into your existing hash function since you need to wait for the hash to complete before calling the compare function. Uh, log res to the console. You should see in the console a hash that says true is printed. If you change my plain text password in the compare function, in the compare my function. Oh, okay. So instead of saying super password with an exclamation point, you just say super password. Then if we were to stop and restart, it should be false. Okay. But um, yeah, why would you have them both in there? I don't know. Uh, you should see it and the truth. If you change the my t uh, password and some other plain text password, oh, I see what's happening. Before I do that, my plain text password, some other plain, t oh, if you do it to some other plain text, so this is what they're saying. If you change it to this, then if you restart the server, it's going to be false. But if you keep them the same, then, um, and you stop and start the server, it's true. If you change, okay. So here they're console logging the hash and they're res res adding the result as true. So... Yeah, that must be what they want to do. So we can stop the server. So get status, get uh, diff. We can see that our difference is that we've added that function in there. So and we're logging the res like they are requesting. Let's um before I deploy this, I'm just going to go console.log the um, response as well here. Oh, the hash. Cool. So save this. Get status. NPM log or NPM start. 
that's going to give us the hash and the true value so we can stop that get add get commit add hash and hash compare methods functions and we can get push okay and because we have it set up with render this should kick over render and we've got a deploy started and so we're gonna wait for that to stop and then we'll get back to it all right now our deployment has seems to have succeeded and if we copy this guy and we come back over to here and we paste it in here say I've completed the challenge it looks like we're a success all right, so we've completed information security with Helmet JS. Oh no, it looks like there's one more to go, and so um, looks like in the next video we will be doing information security for hashing compare sync uh, synchronously, and so we'll see you in the next video.